Yo, yo, what's... Are we just getting into the habit of having distractions come into the clips as soon as we start an introduction? Yeah, you can, you can go. He's persistent, two seconds. Yo, yo, now that situation is sorted and the dog is gone, we can get into today's video. Before you watch this video, make sure you go back to the video we made just before this on this first part uh, for my camera set up and talking about the lenses. It's really informative, really helpful. Go and watch that first. If you have watched that video already and you're here for today's video, welcome. I hope you're enjoying the content. I'm sure you're going to enjoy the rest that we're making today. Right, so I'm just going to get straight into it. Today's video is going to be consistent of a few parts, just like before. We're going to be going through the body of my camera, uh, so the Sony E7R2 that I'm currently filming on, and then we're going to be going over more accessories of my camera, such as uh, my tripod, uh, my camera bags, any other little accessories that help me when shooting. So starting off with, we're going to be going into the body of my camera, which is a Sony a7R2. So starting off with here, you can see the Sony a7R2 there from the Wex Photo and Video website. Retails at £1,199, um, which is mid-range for a camera. Um, some of the Sony A9 range go up to above £2,000 and yeah, quite higher than that. So I'm not going to go specifically into every single detail about the Sony a7R2. Um, there's a list of the specifications on the screen there if you want to read through them, but I am going to talk about the main ones. Um, the megapixels of the camera sits at 42, which is quite high for a uh, for a full frame camera in the first place. Um, the R in Sony a7R2 actually stands for resolution, which actually directly relates to that, um, which means that when you shoot the photos, if you were to zoom in on the photo, it would be ridiculously crisp. And this is perfect for stuff like product shoots and portraits where you really want to get like ideal clean shots uh, with high megapixels. The camera is full frame as opposed to being an APS-C camera, um, which means it does come with a downside of having slightly more expensive lenses. Um, the mounting system's E-mount, but it specifically mounts, if you want the full frame lenses, FE mount lenses. One thing I specifically like about this camera is the electronic viewfinder and how crisp and clean it actually is. Um, Sony are quite well known for having really good electronic viewfinders, um, which make them really nice for uh, using in daytime when you can't actually see the screen. And I tend to use the viewfinder more than I use the actual LED screen on the front. The camera weighs 625 grams, which to some might be considered a bit heavy. And at first it was for me as well. But as I got to using the camera, I realised it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. Even combined with my Sigma 35mm um, 1.4, it's still not uncomfortably heavy. If anything, it feels like a quality weight to me. If having a small and compact camera is a deal breaker for you, I wouldn't recommend the Sony a7R2. It is quite a large body, not as large as some of the um, Sony a9 range or even the uh, a7 III, but it is still quite large in comparison to the smaller APS-C cameras. One other feature this camera has is a uh, dynamic back screen. So although the screen doesn't flip 180 degrees to face you, so it's not necessarily a vlogging camera, although you can use it if you buy external monitors, um, the screen still comes out and articulates up and down. Um, so you can shoot with the camera below your waist, uh, looking down at the shots or even above your head. Um, and you can still see the screen pretty clearly. It really comes down to whether or not I'd recommend this camera. Um, the short answer is yes, I'd recommend it. I'm not planning on changing my setup anytime soon. The high level of uh, megapixels just is perfect for what I use it for. All of the product shoots I've done, all of the company shoots I've done with clothing and whatnot, just it really helps have that extra crisp image when editing. Right, so moving on to one of my first accessories, we're going to be talking about my tripod. The tripod that I tend to use at the moment is a KNF concept. I have to read out the code. KFTM2515. T. Don't ask me why they call it that, but yeah, I was not going to try and remember that. This tripod, right, looks like this. First thing you probably notice is, okay, that's quite compact for a tripod, and that's pretty much one of the main reasons I bought this one. The tripod's functionality works like this. So we have three of obviously the main tripod poles, and they actually fold up against the ball of the tripod head itself. Um, so when you actually want to use it, all you have to do is click the arms into place. You'll notice that there are three clicks as you go along. That's because it's adjustable to how deep or, or shallow you want the edges of the tripod to go. So you could have the tripod more at that angle or more at that angle to adjust the height and just have a little bit of more versatility with it. So once all of these are down, you move the arms out and it creates a normal tripod. On this particular tripod, 
Um, one of the features I found that I don't particularly like as much, but it's completely down to preference, is these textured rings to actually extend the tripod pole itself. I much prefer a clipped tripod pole. I've come to realise the tripod I had before this had clips and I found it way easier when I was out shooting. The only thing is, is when you want to get it up in a hurry and you have to stand there unscrewing all of these, extending them out and trying to screw them back up, I just find that it's a lot more hard than just doing one clip. So that's only one of the downsides for me, but again, that comes down to personal preference as you as a photographer. As far as the head of the tripod itself, it's more of a mid-range design. Um, as you can see here, there are a few different um, knobs and adjustment tools and bits you can use to actually get the shot that you want, which does make it quite good, but it doesn't have the fluidity which you might want for, say, something like video, um, or perhaps just really, really stable slow-mo footage or something along those lines. Honestly, if I could go back in time now and change my purchase, I probably would. The only reason being is that where I'm quite a, a minimalist traveller, and I like to take the smallest, lightest equipment, I'd probably go for a slightly more expensive version of the tripod that I've got. It's good enough for size and it's good enough for weight, but I think I might have invested a little bit more pretty much due to the amount that I use it. So that'd be my only sort of query of it. But if you're just starting out in photography like I was, it's a perfectly well-rounded tripod to use. I'd also consider getting a more um, video style head as well with a handle perhaps so I can start getting more cinematic shots because um, this one is good for photography but not so great for videography. So moving on to my next bit of equipment, we're going to be moving on to my camera bags. This camera bag here is a bag smart camera bag and I didn't actually pay for this myself. I actually received this as a secret Santa gift uh, from someone at work and it's probably one of the best secret Santa gifts I've ever received. So looking at the bag superficially, it's quite a nice colour, charcoal grey, nice carrying handle, clearly lots of pockets on it. And this has been my primary camera bag for about half a year now and I literally could not recommend it anymore. So going on to the outside part of it to start off with, we've got a couple of zips here and there. One of the zips on the front sports a couple of different um, extendable pouches and whatnot. This can be used for SD cards, cables, I've used it for camera batteries a lot. And it comes with this quite handy flap that goes over like this just to make sure everything stays safe and probably more of a uh, like a design feature if anything but yeah nevertheless quite handy on the sides of it we get these elasticated pouches my car keys normally go in here when i'm out or maybe a pack of tissues or a camera strap or something along those lines just handy little essentials you're going to need behind here there's a zip which opens and again another padded little compartment what you want to put in there obviously depends on what type of photographer you are what you might need to carry out of you but the possibilities are pretty much endless with that one going on to the main compartment a nice zip here we've got a mesh pocket up here with another zip and then we've got the main compartment which can be split up using these uh, detachable dividers so depending on the size of your camera uh, you might want your camera taking up more space and you might want your lenses taking up other space but it really does depend what you actually want to use it for. I normally fit in there my camera with one lens and a lens standing by itself as well as a portable charger in the opposite side. And that's pretty much all I need mostly on my shoes. As far as showing you the size of this bag, this is the Sigma 35mm that we went through in the previous video. Um, it's quite a large lens as you can see, but once you get the lens hood off, it fits just about into that part of the compartment and then my camera with the lens on will slide into there and then my portable charger slides down into there and that's pretty much what I take out when I go shooting. I'll have a couple of spare batteries in here, I'll have cables uh, and then just car keys and any other essentials I might need for a shoot. So looking back here now, would I recommend buying this camera bag to people? Yes, I'd recommend it. It's cheap, it's easy to use, it's got everything that you could probably possibly need. But then again, camera bags are completely specific as well. So what I might use mine for uh, might be slightly different to what you want to use yours for um, and what you want to carry inside, etc. So you might want a different compartment. But all of the mid to lower range ones all tend to do the same thing. So it comes down to aesthetics, really, what you think looks nice and what's practical for you. So the last part of this video, before we go into like the small accessories that I'll use, um, the last part is going to be the lighting for these videos. And the best way to show it is 
the lighting you can see on screen are two Vamary standalone studio lights. They have white umbrellas to diffuse the light behind uh, and use 135 watt uh, E27 5500K uh, studio light bulbs. So the K after the 5500 stands for the white balance and it's measured in Kelvin. Um, so a cloudy day, for example, would be 6000 Kelvin. Um, and a blue sky would be 10,000 Kelvin. So it's all about uh, to do with the white balance of the light being emitted. So you choose your bulbs based on the, the feel of images that you want to get. I use these particular bulbs because they're cheap and they run a fairly natural light. So it gives my portraits uh, and any videos I do a more natural look compared to it being too overbright or too dark. These lights in particular are quite cheap. I picked them up off Facebay for £50 secondhand. They'd only ever been used once, um, but they're not much more than that normally. They're quite handy because they do produce a fair amount of light and they're, they're pretty easy to use and pretty standard lights. Just for a starter, I definitely recommend it. It's easy, simple to use. You whack them up and they produce the light you need. So as far as my audio equipment goes, it's nothing too special. It's literally just one Rode mic go. Um, it cost me about £50 off Amazon um, and it's quite handy to be fair. It's a shotgun mic, which means it sort of picks up the audio from a specific area rather than having like a wider range or a wider spread. It's good for getting rid of background noise and that's what I currently use and have been using for the last, well, this video. The video before wasn't used in a mic at all. Um, it just connects straight to your camera via a jack. Um, just plug straight in and then it goes all of the audio that is recorded off it goes straight onto the clip so it's just really easy really handy and you don't have to sync any audio one of the accessories that i've particularly liked with my camera is what you can see on screen there it's a silicone case that sort of enwraps the whole of the body of your camera it's almost like a morph suit it just covers the whole camera and protects it from dust dirt scratches um, and for £26.99, as you can see there, I'm sure you can buy cheaper ones as well. Um, it's just a really handy investment, especially if you plan on changing your setup eventually. Because uh, when you come to sell the camera, you can literally take the silicone case off and the body of the camera should be in the same condition that you bought it in, as long as you take it off regularly and give it a clean, give it a wipe underneath. So that pretty much concludes this video and the end of the series. I hope you have enjoyed the content so far and I hope that it has been informative to you. My equipment is nowhere near by far the most high end equipment and it's also not the most low end equipment. So I just wanted to show you guys as much as I can what sort of setup you could look to aim towards to get to make sure that your photography or videography business starts to get some traction. As always, if you did enjoy the video, um, make sure you go show some support, like it, uh, comment, anything really. If you want to ask me any questions, feel free to comment that. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to the channel for more as well, feel free. As all cliche YouTubers do, go smash that bell notification. Watch every video I ever post. Nah, allow that. But um, yeah, if you do want to put bell notifications on, feel free. Um, it will help seeing my content in the future. For now, obviously have a great day, everyone. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed the video.